I have a number of Sony shortwave portable radios and all of them are showing their age. One of them has got a broken antenna socket so I can't listen on medium waves anymore. Another one has a dead loudspeaker. Another one I tried to modify and it didn't work. So the one that still has the most promise for repair is this one, the Sony SW55. The nearest competitor available now is the Texan PL660, which has the close detection and also an ear bend, which this one hasn't. But the only thing that's wrong with this one is it's a little bit quiet now. This is Radio Australia on 15240. There's nothing wrong with the station. It's not fully quieting. It does in fact give an indication of signal strength. But the fact that it's nowhere near a good volume is a problem with the radio and not with the reception. And the house that you hear in the background is produced somewhere locally outside the house. I have turned down everything in my radio shack that produces interference, such as the external hard disks. What I can demonstrate here is that the FM is also still working. So if I go back to NZFM, this is as loud as it gets. Not all Google sites are equally useful. I first ignored the entry at the top. I vaguely remember that was eventually where I got the owners and service manual combined from. Um, the one that I did get is complete with the schematics and path lists and everything. The video on YouTube shown as the next entry is quite useful. It points out that its electrolytic capacitors that fail. Uh, the author points out that he replaced both the one in the DC DC converter more about that later and the ones around the audio amplifier. The next entry uh, the guy doesn't really say what he is doing uh, he's merely showing the set working but without the case on. This is a crop from the extensive parts list complete as I said and you noticed that there are three 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitors listed C195, C198 and C199. The other capacitors are either ceramics or electrolytic chip. In my experience electrolytic chip capacitors are quite reliable. They don't dry out so much. But the normal electrolytics do dry out. They do either go open circuit or short circuit. The C195 is close to the DC-DC converter. The DC-DC converter is needed to provide the variable tuning voltage inside the radio. You don't need to know anything about that when you operate the radio but that's how it's done internally. If your radio is dead it won't tune then it is likely that something has gone wrong with the DC-DC converter and although I can't immediately see where that C195 is on that section of the diagram, it is physically very close 
when you look at the board layout. So here is the signal board and as you take the case off it's actually the inside which you cannot see. I have marked in orange where these 470 microfarad capacitors are so I can find them once I do open the case. I want to do as much preparation as possible in advance because if you have to open the radio and close it again and open it again and close it again eventually it will break just from you messing around with it. And here I show a slightly closer part of the layout diagram. Again it's the inside as you open the radio and so you can see more closely where those 470 microfarad capacitors are. Having developed some sort of idea what the problem might be and uh, having seen the YouTube vi uh, video that suggests that you're going in the right direction it's now time to try and find the parts. There's a range of 470 microfarad 10 volt capacitors available at radio spares. So which one do you get? One comment on the YouTube video was that what destroys the capacitor for the DC-DC converter is the high ripple current. So we are looking for one which has got a high ripple current rating. I ended up ordering this one. Here are the reasons why I ordered that capacitor. It's got a projected lifetime of 5000 hours. Uh, it has a temperature tolerance up to 105 centigrades and it allows for a ripple current of 600 milliamps. That's possibly better than the capacitors that were in the radio in the first place. Anyway, I put in the order, um, it is promised within five days, so I won't open the radio until I got them. Oh yeah, the other thing is, it's the smallest physical capacitor in the range here. Uh, it's 8mm, so the chances are that it will actually fit where the old ones will come out.